Hello and welcome back to Hyrule Warriors Legend Mode. But we're not really in Legend Mode, are we? I'm Mr. Viperfang and I've got answers to, the, to some questions. The question, why are we not doing Legend Mode today? Well, I'm going to be doing Adventure Mode today. Why am I doing Adventure Mode today? Because there is a certain weapon I want to unlock that can meet the recommendation requirements for the next mission in Legend Mode. So, I'm gonna go on ahead and make a quick detour into Adventure Mode to unlock said weapon. And I'm not sure how this is gonna be edited, but hey, I'll figure it out as I go. Anyway, Adventure Mode is a special mode in which you can acquire heart containers and powerful new weapons, power up your warriors, and unlock new warriors. In Adventure Mode, your goal is to access new areas of the map by winning battles with various special rules. Ultimately, you must find and defeat the Dark Ruler. Where your character can move on the world map depends on the battle rank you have attained in the battles on each map square. Higher ranks give you more options. So, we have this map here. And our ultimate goal today is to get up to... Hold that thought. If you win in Adventure Mode, a special re rewards map will appear. Reward icons will be displayed on any maps with rewards. Win the battle to claim the Bronze Level Reward. To claim the Gold Level Reward, win the battle with an A rank. Guess what I'm gonna be doing? To find and claim the rewards hidden on various map squares, first uncover them by searching, and then win the battle on that square to acquire them. So yeah, our ultimate goal is to get up to this square right here to acquire the weapon that I'm going to be using in the next part. And in my opinion, it's going to be worth it. So let's go on ahead and actually start by taking care of this one. We're ultimately going to be taking care of five map squares overall for this video, and I don't think I'm going to be going into adventure mode for anything else during this Let's Play. So yeah, let's go on ahead and get things started on this square where I'm going to be playing as Fi. And I'm probably going to be playing as Fi on the next one I do, so yeah. Alright, so adventure mode features maps that have various types of missions on them. They can be any... They can range from destroying a certain amount of enemies in 10 minutes taking out commanders, and then ultimately taking out uh, leaders. And they can even be as simple as combat quizzes. And all three types we're going to be uh, taking care of in this uh, video. So basically just take out 300 enemies and then we'll be able to go on to the next one. Whoops. Also, uh, for these defeat enemy missions, uh, after you beat like 100, a, usually a big boss appears. So, I'm also going to be working on avoiding the big boss because he can actually waste a lot of time for you. So, just, uh, you want to avoid him because it's not worth it to take him out usually. Instead, just go after the small enemies here and the lieutenant care, the lieutenant types, like the big post. In addition to the big bosses appearing at 100, every 100 enemies that you defeat, uh, more groups of enemies appear, and they can also range from uh, characters like Lana and Impa. And to stop enemies from growing, growing stronger, you may have to take out these certain enemies before a certain time happens. But yeah, this is pretty much everything that there is to offer for certain amounts of uh, enemies in certain amount of time missions. There we go. They can range from 300 enemies in 10 minutes to 1,000 enemies in 10 minutes. And the ones that require you to beat 1,000 enemies in 10 minutes, they're going to be difficult. Unless you have like a character at level 250. Then it becomes Cakewalk. 
All right, and we got an additional piece of heart for Phi because we got the A rank. If you're wondering if you got an A rank in the mission without getting to the result screen, uh, if there's a reward that you can get for getting an A rank that appears in the treasure chest, the treasure chest will appear before the victory screen. All right, so another important thing to note for these adventure mode maps is some of them will require searches for certain rewards. Like, uh, you need to do a search to get Sheik's A rank item. In this case, I think it is a park container, but we don't have any item cards, so... I don't think I'm gonna be worrying about doing any searches. I'm just gonna try to go straight for the weapon that Link unlocks. Let me check this one real quick. Alright. Yeah, okay. Alright, so... I'm just gonna go on ahead and take care of this mission. Alright, so this one's basically as simple as taking out the enemy commander. The leader of the enemy forces, basically. In this case, it's going to be Volga. However, uh, Volga in this mission is not going to be much of a problem. His AI isn't overly aggressive. The starting missions for the adventure mode maps are meant to be easy and can be taken care of with basically any character that is like around level 1 to 20. They also have some interesting requirements in addition to the main... Uh, objective like reuniting a cuckoo, cuckoo with her mother. Alright, so this is our treasure chest. Let's open it. If I miss any treasure chests, I think I might just go on ahead and show where they are in post or just uh, superimpose them mid video. Or I may not show them at all. And I'll just put like a footnote or something. Like I said, I am not sure how I want to do the, this type of video in terms of editing, but I'll figure out something and get back to you guys on it. I do not want to go into that one yet because a an element that is almost pretty much exclusive to Adventure Mode, at least in the Wii U version, is keeps the have uh, fairies and keeps with barriers that need fairies to uh, dispel the barriers. With barriers up on certain keeps, when you're in those keeps, you take uh, ticking damage. So preferably you'll want to take out the keeps that have the fairies and then head over to the keeps with the barriers. Alright, keep bosses here. Let's go on ahead and wreck his crap up. That wasn't enough. Okay. There we go. Also, you'll note that we failed to reunite the Mama Cuckoo with her chick, so this Coco is going to be coming after us with a fiery rage, basically. Try to avoid the enraged uh, Mama Coco if you fail to reunite the mother and chick. Alright. So, the objective that we need to take care of before going after Volga is taking a certain amount of keeps. And the keeps happen to be the fairy keep and the barrier keep, so this actually works out well for us. Alright, almost done. There we go, keep bosses appeared. We also want to keep a lookout for that Mama Kuko because she's going to be chasing after us. It's not very fun. Also, this Kuko has a red aura around her, so she's going to be immune to knockback. Nope. 
Yeah, usually uh, if you take too much damage, you'll actually lose your A rank because you'll have taken too much damage to uh, get the A rank. I basically just sounded redundant, didn't I? Also, you have to kill a certain amount of uh, enemies to get an A rank, and more often than not, it's going to be 1,200. So I'm going to be trying to hit that magic number in each of these missions that are like this. That have a KO count requirement. Alright, the Mama Kuko is defeated, so I don't have to worry about her for the rest of the, of the mission. If you're trying to farm enemies so that you can get the kill requirement, Use special attacks, use attacks that kill a lot of enemies at once. Just basically do a lot of killing. There's also a time requirement for all of these, and usually for missions like this, it's 15 minutes. So if you're having trouble getting a certain amount of enemies in 15 minutes, you can either go in with a stronger character, or go in after you've leveled up a character you want to use for the missions. Ah, there's Volga. I should have enough kills to get 1,200 while I'm fighting Volga. All right, we've already seen this one, so I'm just skipping through it. There we go. Got him. All right, another successful mission. I'll meet you at the next square. Alright, so now we have an item card. By using item cards on the adventure mode search screen, you may unlock hidden objects and other, other secrets. You gain item cards by winning battles marked with item card icons, such as the compass or bomb. Your item card icons will continue to appear as you win more battles. They, they, do, respo they do reappear, so if you're worried about not, if you're worried about them not reappearing, don't worry about it. They reappear. In fact, I think in uh, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, you have the opportunity to buy item cards when you've unlocked them for the first time. So that's an easy way to get the adventure mode maps unlocked. If they have a candle, try searching on the map. You can find new weapons, which will then, which can then be won as battle rewards. Uh, oh my god, game! I'm not going to. Oh my god, you're going to. You're forcing me to, aren't you? All right, well. For this one, the they basically give you the location. It's uh, this right here, and it needs a candle since it's a bush. All right, and what's going to be the reward? It's a weapon for Impa. Um, I'm probably going to need one for uh, this one, too, so... Uh, I'm gonna take a quick tea detour this way. Be right back. Six and a half hours later. Wait. I did it. Now that I have another item card that I can use to get the ability to unlock the weapon that I want, let's go on ahead and continue on the path that I wanted to take before the game decided to force some tutorials on me. All right. We're gonna be using Impa for this one. So, this one should be fairly easy. Also, she's got a heart container and a heart piece here, so she's gonna get a lot more use. And we're gonna be using the level two weapon that we unlocked at the end of the Ocarina of Time stuff, or at the end of Death Mountain. So, we're gonna be using a big Goron's knife. All right, if I... Just by completing this mission, I'm going to be getting a reward for Impa, so we're going to be unlocking two weapons in one episode. And this mission requires us to stop Bomb Chews. So basically, take out the Bomb Chews, make sure they don't get to certain keeps, and you'll be able to get to the next step of the uh, mission. There we go. All right, after a certain amount of time, if they get into a certain base, they will self-destruct. So destroy them before they self-destruct and you'll save the base. 
and usually the the allied base is going to be the last one to get targeted. So if you fail to blow up the other ones, uh, if you fail to blow up the allied base one, you fail the mission, I think. Or your allied base is extremely vulnerable afterward. And just like this one, and just like all the other missions, I'm going to be farming enemies to get an A rank. So that's going to be very fun. All right, so basically avoid uh, the keep down to the south if you want a chance to get an A rank on this one. All right. I want to make sure the allied base is safe before I advance. And it looks like it has not it is not safe, so let's fix that, shall we? Also, messengers are kind of important to take out because they can call for additional reinforcements. And even though I wanna kill a lot of enemies, I don't want too many enemies because that can actually put me at a big disadvantage. Dang, that's a lot of enemies. All right, water daggers. All right, I think this keep is safe, so I'm just gonna keep going. I'm trying to find the keeps that have the heart container and heart piece for Impa. Unlike the Legend Mode missions, the heart containers are found in keeps in Venture Mode. So basically, I'm going to have to take two keeps to get all of Impus rewards by the end of the mission. Alright, it's not this one. Basically, I'm just going to be going down the line one by one. I have a feeling my allied base is kind of in danger at the moment. But I think they can handle themselves. I hope. I'll head over there once I get the ferry, at the very least. If I don't get a warning about the allied base before then. Alright. Ferry taken. I'm gonna make my way over to the, uh, keep. Oh! Uh... They're taken care of. Alright then. I'm just gonna go on ahead and take the remainder of the keeps until I find the treasure chest I'm looking for. Oh, I don't think I've ever shown off that ability on Impa. That one's actually pretty good for taking out enemies in front of you after running along the ground with your sword. Alright, here's one of them. I have a feeling I'm gonna find the other one in the barrier keep. So I'm going to go on ahead and make my way over there, and then I'm going to go on ahead and wreck house inside the enemy base. Oh, it's a poor Lizafuls. Oh well. Would have been a lot more fun if it were an enemy character. Like Volga. Or Wizro. Or hell, even Agatha. But it's just a regular Lizafuls. Oh crap, forgot to have this ready. There we go. And now my, uh, damage taken is gonna look really weird. Oh wow, that was actually pretty effective. A lot more effective than it has been. Alright, perfect. Got the other treasure chest. Let's crack this thing open and then head over to the enemy base. -na 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 -na. I think that'll do the trick. Yep, there we go. Mission successful. <laughs> and since I don't need to wonder if I got an A rank for this one, I'm always going to get a treasure chest for completing this thing the first time. I got a thing. I got a... Damage taken of 128, which looks very weird. Because, like I said, it, the damage ticks over time. And even though quarter hearts are like a hundred apiece, uh, it can't really measure that based on the heart. So it 
looks weird every time. The weapon I got is the Guardian Naginata. A Naginata enchanted with fire, fire handed down in the Sheikah tribe for generations. And it's good for a lot of defensive tactics. It can create a barrier of fire, which damages enemies that goes through it. Uh, it's basically a lot of defensive techniques. So, if you're into that kind of thing, the Naginata might just be for you. Alright, so, our next thing is going to be Darunia. And he's going to take on a quiz. So, let's see what these quiz uh, type missions are all about. Alright, the quiz consists of three questions. Defeat the correct enemy. Advance to the next key. Basically, uh, the quizzes are missions where we just have to defeat certain enemies that are described to us. So for the first question, defeat the wielder of a wooden shield. And we've got a dark nut and a moblin. Since the moblin has a shield that's made out of wood, we defeat the moblin. And I want to not get hit by him. There we go. Defeated. And in order to get an A rank for these quiz type missions, we have to answer everything correctly. So it's imperative that you try not to damage the other enemies in the process. Because that can happen. Alright, the second question. In this case, second enemy we have to take out is a lantern wielder. We have a big Poe and another dark nut. And since uh, the dark nut doesn't wield a lantern, we take out the big Poe. Oops. All right. I'm doing everything in my power to avoid the dark nut uh, in this one because if you'll notice, he did take some damage and I want to minimize that. All right, let's head over to the last keep, which is going to take a while. Defeat the helmet wielder. We have two different moblins this time. One of them doesn't have a helmet, so since the shield moblin has a helmet, we take out the one that's named shield moblin. All right, let's go on ahead and use my specials on this guy, because I think that's going to take care of him for good. There we go. Got him isolated. All right, I defeated the correct enemy. Mission successful, the quiz is over, and we have answered each one correctly. So we're gonna get the full A rank. <laughs> and because we got an A rank, we're getting a reward for Darunia. And in this case, it's gonna be a heart container. Heart container for Darunia. All right, I'll meet you guys on the overall world map for the final mission that we're going to be taking. Okay, so it turns out I actually didn't need to uh, take this uh, mission out to get a candle to do a search here because Daru the mission that Darunia took care of did that for me. All right, so if I remember correctly, the square I'm doing should be this one. And if you're wondering uh, how I can figure out where all the uh, secret things are, uh, all of the secrets on the Adventure Mode map line up with all of the secrets that are in the original Legend of Zelda. So if you want a cheat sheet for where all these secrets are, do a Google search for uh, Legend of Zelda Overworld 1 map, and all of the secrets on that map will be the secrets on this map. So yeah, just a little food for thought. And let's go on ahead and get the thing that we came in here for. Alright, so on the docket today is probably taking out some commanders. Team up with Zelda to defeat Volga. Alright, we've got an outpost. Yeah, I was right. We're uh, taking out some 
We're taking out some uh, captains. And we're once again facing off against Volga. So let's go on ahead and try to have some fun during this one. I'm going to go on ahead and take the Fairy Fountain starting off. Or take the uh, Fairy Keep starting off. Oh wow, that that move is actually pretty useful for mowing down lesser enemies. All right, another keep captured, so let's go on ahead and keep uh, moving down south. All right, I was wrong on this one. Oh well, time to go and wreck house inside our own house. Oh wow, it's a couple of raid captains and one of the enemy captains. Kuko is calling help from other Kukos. So for this type of Kuko, uh, it's going to be friendly. So don't worry about it wanting to peck your eyes out if you damage it too much. Uh, in order to get some more Kukos to appear, you have to keep defeating enemies. And with the enemy density the way it is right now, that's going to be very easy. Alright, I have beaten two of the commanders, or captains. Nice. Look at that, we got a hell of a lot more Kukos now. Oh boy, uh, Zelda's getting juggled. Let's go on ahead and alleviate some of the pressure that's being put on her. And this is also going to help with our KO count, so I'm not complaining at all. There we go. As long as we take out the enemies with health bars, it should be okay. Oh, good. I got a reward. I got a thing. Wrong song. Alright, heart container for Link. And if you'll notice, we have started a second row of hearts. So, go us. Alright, so the last keep that they have outside of the enemy base, that's probably where the other reward is. I think there are two rewards for this one. I don't remember at this point. A lot of stuff has been happening, so yeah. It's also been a long recording session for just this one episode, so yeah. It's hard to remember what everything is. God, I've got so many chickens following me. Look at all these chickens. All right, let's go on ahead and take out the last enemy commander, then make our way down to the enemy base, and then win. You can say goodbye forever. All right, now let's go on ahead and make our way down to the enemy base because I have some words for Volga. All right, skip the cutscene, get this guy out. All right, hey Volga. Some words! Alright, get your happy ass over here so I can hit you again. There we go. Got him. Alright, so we're gonna get a new weapon because we're guaranteed it. Because it wasn't a gold reward. We got a thing! Ha! Right song! And we've got some happy chickens. I'm gonna go on ahead and retire from being a warrior and go and set up a chicken farm and raise some chickens. Got a good, I've got a good amount here. I'm gonna love them all and call them Bessie. Even though they're not cows. 
Eight minutes and six seconds, that much damage taken, that many KOs. I am too good at this game. All right, this is the weapon that I was wanting, the Silver Gauntlets, a powerful gauntlet and flail combo set, perfect for devastating attacks. Press the strong attack button, allows you to pick up and throw enemies. And it's lightning element elemental, so we have our weapon. And if you'll notice, that weapon, uh, the flail is actually the uh, ball and chain from Twilight Princess, and the gauntlets are the silver gauntlets from Ocarina of Time, so it's two references in one. So yeah, I got the weapon I came for, which means I'm completely done with uh, Adventure Mode. So now that we're done with that, let's go on ahead and turn our attention back to Legend Mode. We're all done with the video, though. But, next time, we're going to be ready to take on uh, the Temple of the Sacred Sword. To hopefully get the Master Sword. All of that just to get a recommendation taken care of. Why would I do that? Just because. I think it's fun. Later.